Revelation 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth. So no wind could blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, who had the seal of the living God. The seal of the living God. What does God seal us with? His Holy Spirit. The Bible says so. He shouted out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given permission to damage the earth and the sea. Hear this. Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God or the bond servants of our God. Hold on on your destruction. First, let's seal the foreheads, the minds. Now I heard the number of those who were marked with the seal, 144,000 sealed from all the tribes of the people of Israel. What is the seal? What are the seals? What amounts to a seal? A sign, a mark, a stamp. I am involved, authorized. This has my approval. This has my involvement. This is my mark, my brand. Recognize that I am involved in this matter. That's the seal. And who are the people that were sealed? Born servants, dolos in the Greek whose ears had been taken to the door and it had been opened because they loved their master and their wives and children. So this is the principle. So they obeyed and they did what God said and they were sealed. They chose God. The picture in the Old Testament say he has opened my ear early that I might hear is an open ear, a listening ear. He that has an ear, an ear upon an ear, ears that hear, hearing, shema. In the Hebrew is to obey to hear is to obey to hear and not to obey is not hearing you're the foolish man who built your house on the sand your house will come tumbling down these guys were marked on their foreheads why not so they would not be there when the destruction when the winds by the four angels the four angels winds represent troubles and all that sometimes in this instance these angels were to hold it then they were going to release it on the earth. There would be all sorts of trouble and disaster. But the way God prepared them was by marking their minds. And this is the part I'm saying that many of us don't understand. When you read something like that, what do you think God is saying? When they say that people took the mark of the beast. Have you seen that before that they took the mark of God? There was a mark of God. And it was only applied to the born servants. Those who committed themselves to God. People focus on the mark of the beast and how they will avoid it. The only way I know clearly you can avoid the mark of the beast, the super clear way, is by having the mark of God, the living God, seal of God on your forehead. When they come with their own. Oh, okay. They've marked you. Okay. Okay. You've already been sealed. You've already been marked. So I can't mark you again. You're not to be marked again. And do you know that every time the words of God are spoken, Christ and him crucified is preached. That you're being marked. You're being marked upon your mind. Your forehead represents your mind. You're being marked. The seal of God is being left. What is the seal of God? The Holy Spirit. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Verse 27. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things. That what he teaches you is truth and is not a lie. It's the teaching of the Holy Spirit. True instruction from God. On your forehead. On your thinking. Changing how you think. When that is there, you will be safe. You will be in the midst of the storms. The winds will be released. All sorts of winds. It's been described in different ways. Military winds, economic winds, financial, I mean, you know, social winds, upheavals, different ways of thinking. You know, your WhatsApp, your social media. Those are winds, strong winds, not being tossed to and fro like little children. Those winds have been released. How can you face the wind? How can you press into the wind and not being blown off your feet? How do you keep from being blown off your feet? You are sealed by the living God. You are sealed by his spirit. This is the sealing of God that stops you from taking the mark of the beast, which is mainly an economic mark. It does not allow you, if you don't have it, you cannot buy or sell. Because the mark of the beast is a mark that enables you to buy and sell. It's given in the forehead and in the hand. Your thinking and in your business. The works of your hands. The devil marks that, leaves his mark on you and says, yes, I control your thinking, I control what you do. God comes ahead of that. You don't hear him say he marks your hands. He marks your thinking because you want to do the will of God according to the law of your mind, the law of sin, 
and the love of the spirit and he describes it as your mind within your mind the law of your mind it wants to do the will of god then the law of sin and death wants to sin you walk on the mind you apply the laws of god there into your thinking and you can overcome all the winds that will come they will increase they've already been coming they've been coming physical energy exerted against you strong winds how are you going to resist it people are waiting to take the mark they've been taking it since taking it since since waiting for for someone to write on your forehead six 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 is the number of man six man was created on the sixth day scriptures say revelations 9 verse 4 they were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green plant or tree but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their forehead, the grass of the earth, any green thing, something that is flourishing and has life, the sealed ones, they couldn't touch them. Everything can be falling down around you and you're untouchable. It will increase. The temptations will increase. I've often said it's not hard to know how much you need to prepare. How? You go for holiday sometimes and you grow cold within three weeks, one month, two some people depending on what stage it has happened to many ones who are coming and going you can't survive holiday what will you do when you separate for one year for three years for five years for ten years i'll ask you the question jesus asked shall the son of man find faith on earth when he comes if one month holiday two three you're doing the moonwalk what will you do three months three years what will you do you're already wondering, what do I compromise? Is this really bad? It used to once be very clear that bad is bad and good is good. Suddenly now it's not very clear again. Um, I don't know, would the pastor have really said, uh, he start dancing salsa? Two months, three months, nothing is clear. Things get all fuzzy. Did they, is it really bad? Um, I'm not even talking about the ones that you're right here in the midst of everybody. Confusion reigns in your being. What will you do? I'm not impressed by how spiritual you appear now all i am is happy that you're spiritual i'm not impressed when i see you 15 years from now and you are hotter than you were now then i'll go like thank you jesus the real deal before that don't bother you can't start boasting as the bible says let not he that puts on his armor boast like him that is taking it off you haven't faced the battle yet you're asking like hey wait in the shell you have not started be serious about making sure your seal is sure. The seal of God stands sure. Second Timothy 2. The Lord knows those that are his. And let him that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. That's the one we see. The other one is the Lord that knows who are his. What may I know? Are you involved in lawlessness? The word iniquity, anomia, is lawlessness. That which is not lawful according to the law of God. As long as what you're doing is not lawful, the seal of God is not on you. The seal of God is the opposite of sin. You can't be sinning and say, Hey, nothing will happen, I'll stand. You see me? I've heard people, they are planning how they will not take the, the mark of the beast. Clowns. If they check well, they have like three marks already. One on either temple and one on the forehead. Yeah, they even ask for extra. They put one and say, if we add here, marks all over. Their hands tattooed front and back. Everything they touch is corrupted. Bad people worshippers of mammon and they claim and think that all is fine when nothing is fine nothing is fine god does not want us confused about these things if you don't know even these small basics i like most of the church does not know they don't know what the mark of the beast is they don't know all that they have all sorts of fuzzy ridiculous ideas about it is that not what happens when you run after money so you'll be loving mammon here then waiting if anyone comes to me and tells me turn your hand i'll stamp it i will never i'll rather die this is what you're saying. I'm going to live how I like. Love all the things that are in the world. The loss of the flesh. The loss of the eyes. The pride of life. But when it comes to deciding whether I go to the lake of fire or not. I'm going to resist it. I will in my own energy have the power and say no, no. Kill me. I can never burn. But you live how you like. Don't be confused. The only way you can escape the mark of the beast. Is by having the mark of the born servants of Christ. If it is not on you. That is an empty forehead. Those are empty hands. The enemy will apply his own seal or mark. There is no blank space in the spirit. That you attempt to be blank and neutral. 
I'm sitting on the fence. The enemy answered, but the fence is mine. So you're my property. I don't care if you're sitting on the fence. You've chosen a side. There's no side like middle. If you won't take God's side, you're on the enemy's side. Forget it. The Bible says, they were told not to damage the grass. They were only to damage those people who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. So get ready to be damaged. This is scripture. You don't have a choice. That's why many born again Christians will be damaged, are being damaged. I'm not talking about the future as the way you think. It's happening all the time. They are under the control of the wicked one. The enemy buffets them to and fro in their thinking, in their lifestyle, in their obedience, in their soul. Because they don't have the mark of the born servant. They have not laid it all down. They pick and choose, pick and choose, pick and choose. They think you can use God. 